And from propane, we go to fracturing fluid. Okay, the objective, the main objective of uh, the frac fluid is to deliver propane to the formation. You may ask why, uh, why can't we just use water? Okay, and you can do very, very simple experiment. If you have a uh, normal water, okay, potable water and you just drop sand, then there will be a very fast separation between the water phase and the sand phase. And if you have that frac fluid system in your fracturing operation, then you will be screened out automatically, very fast screen out because the the sand will accumulate it on the on the bottom hole in the bottom hole, and it will plug your well. But if you have proper frac fluid, then you can deliver, you can achieve well operation. Okay, so go back to the frac fluid fluid. Uh, the desirable, the criteria for the frac fluid is, of course, proper viscosity. Viscosity is very important so that it will have uh, capacity and ability to transport the propane. OK, and of course, we we don't want it to be toxic, so we desire it to be non toxic, non damaging to the reservoir. OK, easy to make because we will make it on the fly. During the operation, we will make we will mix the frac fluid, so it is it has to be easy to make. And low fluid loss, okay, low fluid loss. We don't want the fluid to 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 be lost to the the reservoir. It can also result in screen out, okay, where you cannot frac your reservoir because all the propane will accumulate in the well bore. OK, and then you cannot push to to frack the reservoir and it should be of low friction so so that there will be small pressure drop across the tubing when you pump your frack fluid. Easy to break, environmentally friendly and of course economical. OK, and this is the component. So the frack fluid is composed of water and propane almost 100%. But we also have surfactant, KCL, all right, and gelling agent to create the gel. Friction reducer, from the name itself, you can understand the, the use of this component, of this additive. Biocide, okay, to prevent bacteria. Iron control, corrosion inhibitor to prevent corrosion. Crosslinker, OK, to increase the viscosity breaker to break the frac fluid after it has been uh, entered into the reservoir and created fracture. pH adjusting agent and scale inhibitor. All right, and KCL is used to avoid clay swelling, All right? And originally the base fluid is oil based actually. Why? Why originally oil is used to be a base fluid for, for the frac fluid? Because it's less damaging to clay. OK, less damaging to clay. Clay usually swell when uh, it exposed with water, fresh water, and it gives low interfacial tension. That's easily understandable. OK, but more and more we prefer water based frac fluid. Why? Because it is safe, available, right? We want to sell oil, not we want to inject oil back to the reservoir, right? And it is, of course, economical. While oil base, the negative of the oil base, the weakness of the oil based fluid, it is, of course, expensive and operationally difficult to handle and, of course, not environmentally friendly. But the, the challenge we have with water based frac fluid is, of course, damaging to clay, but it can be solved with the use of, like I said before, KCL. OK. All right, and now we are talking about frac fluid. It is very, very viscous. Why? Because we have polymer, we have gel there. OK, talking about polymer, you understand that we have linear polymer. It has relatively low viscosity and we have branched polymer. 
and in fracturing operation, especially the main fracturing operation, we involve or we use cross-link polymer and the viscosity is very, very, very significantly higher compared to the linear polymer. OK, so in the final main fracturing job, we use cross-link polymer so that the, fr the frac fluid can deliver the propane into the reservoir. OK, how to make it? The main additive, water, use gelling agent, usually the guar gum, OK? And it will create linear gel with viscosity usually below 50 centipoise. All right. So if you want to do a breakdown operation, OK, breakdown operation, usually we only use linear gel. OK, but if we go to mini frac or of course main frac, we will use cross linker. The most important or the most popular crosslinker is Borat in the industry to create crosslink gel like this one. OK, like this one. And it has viscosity more than 100 centipoise. OK, the effect visually can be seen. With this picture, so you have linear gel here. OK. Low viscosity and then you increase the you give the gelling agent. You can go to this one and you you add cross linker. You will have this gel system that will be used for manufacturing operation. OK. And again, after the frac fluid has successfully bring transport the propane into the reservoir and create fractures, we don't want it to stay there as gel. We want to break the gel so that it minimizes the formation damage because of course gel will be formation damage okay after the fracturing is completed so we want to break the gel how by using breaker okay usually the popular breaker is using persulfate so the breaker will cut this cross linking so that we will have linear gel and of course water and it will loss into the reservoir so there will be no uh, gel that can obstruct the flow can hinder the flow can plug the fracture there will be no gel again okay because the linear gel and the water can loss into the reservoir okay due to its low viscosity all right and we have talked about introduction and then geomechanics, basic geomechanics and then propane and then frac fluid. And now we talk about fracture model and design. 